Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, collection classes that you can use in Java. So I'm going to give you some examples of each of these lists. So an array list, a queue, a stack, and a hash map. So these are things that manage lists of data. In Java, there's a whole hierarchy of how these objects are inherited. So starting with the top at collection, you can see that there's sets, lists, and queues on one side, and over on the other side is a different kind of category called map. And so we'll look at both sides here. So starting here with the simplest of them, let's talk about an array list. You might already know what arrays are. Array lists are basically arrays with extra functions built in. So you can see that we have a list of numbers here. Each of them has a position from 0 to 7, and each position can have a different integer. Think of an array list or an array as a box of eggs. And so there are 12 items in this array. We can put an egg in each location, or we could put a little button or a toy or a paper clip or any other object in the little cup. And so an array list is a container of a list of items. This is what code would look like if you were to create an array list. So you can see from the first line that we have list L1, and it is implementing the array list. And so we use the function called add to put a number on it, and you can see at the end we print two different lists. So very similar to arrays. Algorithms that you can use in a list are a bit more advanced than an array. So you can see that you can sort them, you can shuffle them, reverse them, and others. So array lists are much more flexible than the standard array. Perhaps the best advantage of an array list over a standard array is that you can change its size. When you declare an array in Java, it's a static element until you destroy it. So array lists are dynamic. The next item is called a queue. So a queue is like a list, has a front and a back. And so the rule here is that the first one in line is the first one out of line. So it's only fair if you went to McDonald's and you stood in line, you expect to be served next. And the people that come in the door behind you have to wait their turn. So in programming, you might think of a printer queue as a great use for a queue. So a document that goes into the printer should get first priority and those that come later should have to wait their turn. Unless, of course, you cut in line and perhaps you have a boss queue or a manager queue where they take precedent. They take precedence, they take priority. The next item is called a stack. A stack is another list. It only has a top though. So think of a stack of books or a stack of records. And when you lay something on the desk and put other things on top of it, and so the rule on this one is that the last item put on the stack is the first one to be removed. And so the first guy in is the last one out. So a stack versus queue is about the order of items. So stack is last in, is the first out. A queue is the first in, is the first one out. A hash map is a little bit more complicated. So I'd like to use an analogy of a key rack. Every key on the rack has a specific number. Every key will open a specific mailbox. And then inside the mailbox, you have the contents of the mail. So if we were to think of this in programming, we, would might, we might have a, an object called key rack, which is a hash map. And so the item that is inside of 1P is actually a letter from the utility company. Let me give you something more specific. So a hash map example here would be, let's create a hash map of a list of people. And we're going to call it also known as, and you can see that it's a map that inherits from a uh, uh, implementation of an interface called HashMap. So I'm going to put three people into my list, also known as. So Elvis is known as the King, Alexander is known as the Great, and Henry Winkler is known as the Fonz. So if I tried to print these, I would say, print the list of the person called Elvis. Print also known as Alexander and print also Henry Winkler. What do you think is going to print? So when it prints, you're going to get the king, the great, and the fonts. And so we'll be working with some examples in a few minutes here on creating hash maps. So just remember that there's a whole lot of different objects in 
Java and other languages that use collections. And so the most common ones that I've mentioned here are the ones that we'll be using in our programming. So most collections, well actually all collections, have these elements. So you can check to see if the list is empty, it contains an item, you can remove an item. You can see all these down here. So as you look at the documentation on the Java manuals and the textbooks, this is the list of items that should be explained there and that you should become familiar on how to use them. So when you're using a list, usually you have to loop through the list. You have to go one by one and do something with it, such as print it or change it slightly. And so you can use a for loop. And uh, I would prefer probably the, the second item, the for each loop, because it just makes more sense to me. And it uh, will let you go one by one through the objects.